Good evening. A couple of days ago, Mr. Webb made a video about memorials and Jeremy Hunt's promise to donate £1 million for Muslim... a memorial to Muslim soldiers killed in combat in both the world wars. Now, of course, to some extent, he has a point when he knows that's an attempt to buy votes. However, he then went on to make the following claims. Let me share my screen and read out this text by him. I mention this because I note with disgust that our tax are you to be used to the tune of a million pounds to fund a war memorial exclusively for Muslim soldiers who died in the First World War and the Second. Why just Muslim, you ask? Do you think that Hindus and Sikhs might be a little peeved about this to say nothing of the Gurkhas? Why do you suppose this has been done singling out just one religion and ignoring the contributions by others? It's very simple. Just at the moment, there has been friction between the Muslims and the main political parties in this country. Both the Conservatives and the Labour Party, that's what this election was in Rochdale was all about. I think it may have had a few other issues involved. It is felt by the government this might be a really good time to suck up to the Muslims by bunging them a million pounds by money for a war memorial of their own. Why don't we care about upsetting Hindu Sikhs and Gurkhas by leaving them out such a product. That's easy. Hindus and Sikhs are not going to start charging around the streets in the way that many Muslims have been every Saturday since the autumn. Um, as far as I know, um, I'm not aware of any part of India that's currently under British rule where there's a rerun of the Amritsar massacre, but leaving that aside, and making people feel uneasy because they're not likely to be menacing Leaving this aside, the claims about other war memorials really don't stand up to sort of examination. And we're going to start by looking at some of those claims. Let's have a look at this. This is the Gurkha Memorial in London. The Memorial to the Brigade of Gurkhas on Horse Guards, Avenue, Horse, Horse Guards Avenue. Good to God, that was a terrible bit of mumbling there. While London was unveiled by Queen Elizabeth II on the 3rd of December 1997. So there is a memorial to the Gurkhas. Now, it's taken me about 30 or 40 minutes to assemble some links for this. I would have to ask, what is stopping anyone doing that? If you are going to talk about these subjects, you really do need to check your sources. This was the first memorial to Gurkha soldiers in the United Kingdom and was occasioned by transport of their headquarters and trading centre from Hong Kong to in London in 1997. The sculpture was Philip Jackson, working from a statue of 1924. There you go. Now that's sitting there on Horse Guards Avenue, Whitehall. I couldn't have gone out and built it, and anyone who wants to go and look at it is quite welcome to, and check that I'm not making it up. Coming back to the, the issue with Sikh soldiers, this is from around 2018 now. Knowing government promises, I wonder if this has money has ever been paid on to the uh, Sikh servicemen since the... Uh, all governments tend to be, well, slower than molasses running down a, a hill on, on Titan in a, in a bad winter. Um, the community secretary confirmed support for Sikh War Memorial to mark the contribution made by Sikh servicemen. Plans for a national memorial to honour the contribution Sikhs made to our Britain and allies as today, 30th January 2018, received backing from community secretary Jarvid. Javid, he confirmed government support for campaign to erect a Sikh war memorial in London. There we are. There's also a small follow-up on it from the same year with the, um, a little bit later, for, uh, talking people are talking about finer site for the Sikh soldier monument. I'm going to see if I can find a bit more about that one over the next day or two. There is a Sikh War Memorial, which was funded by members of the Sikh community in Bristol, um, which is quite a large memorial. And there's a link to it, Sikh War Memorial and Remembrance Garden officially opened in Castle Park. 
attended by hundreds both from within and outside the Sikh community. The opening of the Sikh Memorial on Tuesday was a historic and important moment. The garden was built to commemorate Sikh soldiers that served in World War One and Two, and so they should have a memorial. I, I have high respect for people who fought in World War One and Two. I have plenty of family members who fought in both. So I don't wish to forget them and honour their memory myself. Now, leaving aside that, we have Wilson United Synagogue Cemetery. Now, this, to be fair, may have been built by privately by the local Jewish community, or it may have been put up by the government. But it's certainly there, and I've actually stood next to it in real life. I've been there. I stood next to this one on Remembrance Day events, so I, I know it's there. And leaving that aside, you have this, the Chattery War Memorial in the English city of Brighton and Hove, which memorializes Hindu and Sikh soldiers who were cremated, as is common <laughs> um, burial practice. It, so we're not, there are memorials. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of research. And leaving that aside, we have, of course, the and the National Holocaust Center, which um, I apologize for that rather vile anti-Semitic propaganda there that popped up. It's on the front page of it. I didn't realize it was going to pop up. It's absolutely vile. And I can see why they're trying to teach people to avoid it for the future. We'll sort of scroll past it and outside of a British dimension and to be fair since Webb was only talking about the UK this one I can't take issue with him this is a war memorial in my father's home county in Ireland the Kilkenny War Memorial and um, the Great War has of course a, a rather different sort of um shall we say relationship with Irish history there as it occurs just before the War of Independence, and thus it had a contested history for many years. And if you put up a memorial to the British in Irish, there was a good chance of it, it being smashed. With this one, even so, when it was put up, the face of the soldier in the middle on the wall there did get smashed the first few times and suffered damage, which was quite sad, as I thought we'd move past that. And I'm saying that as somebody who's fairly nationalist. I still thought we'd got past that and we could try and, you know, reassess the issues somewhat. Now, I'm a donor to that particular one in a minor way, and my family's name have names that appear on the 800 odd dead people's names that are on, on those walls. People, that there, there is space for a overall war memorial for everyone, a cenotaph but people do like to remember things within their own community. And as usual, there seems to have been limited research carried out by Webb in lieu of using an issue to boost anger and prejudice. And this is getting quite worrying. It didn't take me at all long to assemble any of these links. I have a cup of tea and coffee next to me, 30 minutes sitting here with it, and I assembled it. This is why I constantly keep saying these kind of YouTube historians doing this can be dubious. There are people on YouTube who are historians, amateur and professional, are well worth listening to. And, some, and that includes conservative, left-wing and centrist ones. But there are also people who are very shallow and very partial in how they select evidence and don't offer various points of view. And that is dubious. And yet again, we saw that with this claim about war memorials. <laughs>